What's going on besties? Today we're going to be talking about the ATIT's version 7 science, more specifically chemistry, and we're going to be talking about acids and bases. Let's get started. So let's explore the pH scale and the nature of acids and alkalines. The pH scale that we use is used to determine whether a solution is acidic or alkaline, ranging anywhere from 0 all the way up to 14. The lower numbers that we see, getting all the way closer to 0, they're going to be more highly acidic, while the higher numbers that we see, getting closer to 14, is going to signify high alkalines. A substance is considered neutral if it has a pH of 7, just like we see with pure water, which is neither acidic nor alkaline. To put this into perspective, let's consider the acid that we find in our stomach, which has a pH of around 2. This acidity helps kill bacteria and aid in our digestion. On the other hand, we have acid range, which typically has a pH of 4, indicating that it's less acidic than stomach acid, but it's still harmful to our environment. Moving to our alkalines, common household items provide good examples. So when we look at body wash, body wash typically has a pH of around 9, making it kind of mildly alkaline. Well, when we look at bleach, bleach actually has a pH closer to 12, indicating that it has a very strong alkaline. I want you to keep in mind that examples like these are provided to help conceptualize the pH scale. You don't have to memorize these specifically when it comes to your ATITs. So pH can be measured using several methods, each with its own advantages. One common method involves the use of indicators, which are chemicals that change color based on the pH level of the solution that they're in. These indicators are typically dyes that respond to the specific pH levels, making them useful for visual assessments of acidity and alkalinity. Some indicators are composed of a mixture of dyes and are known as wide range indicators because they can gradually change color across a broad spectrum of pH values. A well-known example of a wide range indicator is a universal indicator which displays a color range from deep red in very acidic conditions and blue or purple in highly alkaline conditions. Limus is a commonly tested thing that you will see on the T's whenever it comes to pH balance because it is an indicator commonly found absorbed onto paper as litmus paper. So this is important to memorize. Whenever we have blue litmus paper, it's going to turn red under acidic conditions, meaning that the pH is going to be less than 7. And in contrast, red litmus paper is going to turn blue under alkaline conditions whenever we have a pH that is greater than 7. Another method for measuring pH is known as a pH probe that is attached to a pH meter. This particular technique involves inserting a probe into a solution to electronically determine its pH levels. The meter's digital display on the front of the screen is going to provide a precise numerical reading. So the advantage to using a pH probe over other indicators is its accuracy and precision, as it eliminates that subjectivity when it comes to interpreting color changes. So next up, let's clarify what classifies a substance as an acid. So an acid can be defined as any substance that when it dissolves in water forms a solution with a pH of less than 7. This is the acidic characteristic is due to the release of hydrogen ions into the water, making the solution more acidic. An example of this is when we put hydrochloric acid, also known as HCl, into water, it's going to dissolve. And what it does is it disassociates and releases hydrogen ions, thus increasing the hydrogen ion concentration that we would see in the solution. On the other hand, bases are substances with a pH greater than 7. Within the category of bases, there are specific subgroups known as alkalines. Alkalines are bases that are soluble in water. When an alkaline dissolves in water, they produce hydroxide ions, also known as OH negative, contributing to the solution's basic nature. A great example of this would be sodium hydroxide, also known as NaOH, which when dissolved in water disassociates into sodium, Na positive, and OH negative ions. The OH negative ions can combine with hydrogen ions in the water to form H2O, effectively reducing the concentration of hydrogen ions. When acids and bases are mixed together, they undergo a neutralization reaction. This reaction typically results in the formation of water, 
as well as salt, effectively neutralizing the original substance's acid and basic properties. For instance, when hydrochloric acid reacts to sodium hydroxide, which is commonly used as an acid and base reaction, respectfully, they're going to produce sodium chloride as well as water. These neutralization reactions can also be represented at the ionic level, where hydrogen ions from the acid and OH negative ions from the base combine to form water. Since both acids and base neutralize each other, the pH of the resulting product are typically neutral around a pH of 7. Before we move on to our practice questions, let's review some common acids and bases that you might encounter on the T's. Prominent acids that you might see would be hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, and nitric acid. The big key memory trick that I want you to take away is that a lot of these acids end in IC, like we see in hydrochloric, sulfuric, and nitric. On the base side, you're frequently going to come across hydroxide and carbonates, which means that they are gonna end in oxide or nates, like we see in sodium hydroxide and calcium carbonate. So our question states, what type of ions do alkalis produce in water? Is it hydrogen ions, hydroxide ions, bicarbonate ions, or sulfate ions? And the correct answer is hydroxide ions. It's gonna be B, because alkalis is a subset of bases, and when it dissolves in water, it's going to produce hydroxide ions contributing to its basic nature. What is the primary function of a wide range pH indicator in a laboratory? Is it to determine the exact pH value of a solution? Is it to determine general estimate of the pH range of a solution? Is it to neutralize acids and bases? Or is it to increase the reaction rate? And the correct answer is B, to provide a general estimate of the pH range of a solution. Remember, wide range pH indicators are used to give a visual approximation of the pH value across a broad range, helping to identify whether a solution is strongly acidic, neutral, or strongly basic. What does a pH of 7 indicate about a solution? Is it acidic, basic, neutral, or highly reactive? And the correct answer is C, it is neutral. Remember, a pH of 7 is considered neutral, indicating that that solution is neither acidic or basic. And we see this a lot when it comes to pure water. What is formed when an acid reacts to a base? Is it acid only, base only, salt and water, or hydrogen gas? And the correct answer is C, salt and water. Remember that neutralization reaction, that reaction between an acid and a base is known as neutralization reactions, and they typically are going to produce salt and water. I hope that this video is helpful in understanding acids and bases when it comes to your ATITs. As always, make sure that you leave your comments down below. I love answering your questions. Head over to nursechunkstore.com where there's a ton of additional resources available to you to help you ace those ATITs exams. And as always, I'm going to catch you in the next video. Bye!